video, I'm going to teach you how to make professional Minecraft thumbnails and the three essential steps in this process. So let's start. First things first, you need to get a green screen character render like the one shown here on screen. This will be used in the end result thumbnail. And please be sure to watch the video all the way to the end so you don't miss anything. There are quite a few different ways to get a character render, so I will only cover my top three methods. The first way you can do this is by loading up a creative world, and once you are in it, you can build a little green screen out of lime concrete, and then wow. put on your character and the desired armor slash things you want to hold in your hand, and stand in the green screen. However, this isn't really the best method because it can be slightly tricky to remove the background of this image due to the shadows on the green screen. Also, the poses that you can do are very limited. The next method is going to a site called NovaSkin, and from here, you can import your skin by hitting the open button in the top left, and then position it with even bending of the arms and legs to whatever you want. From here, you can select what your character is holding by either pressing on the hold right or hold left button. Then, once you select your item, it will automatically put it into your character's hand. Lastly, go into a new tab and search for green screen, and then select an image, and then save it to your desktop. Now you can head back over to Nova Skin and hit the background button on the top right, and then hit choose file. From here, you can navigate on your computer to where you saved your green screen, and then hit open. Now you can see you have a green screened character. All you have to do now is screenshot your work. The last method to get a green screen character render is to use an app called Minimator. Minimator can by far do the best job at rendering a character because you can add lighting and what direction the light is coming from and even blocks. However, it is also a lot more complicated than the first two methods that I have shown you. So, for the sake of time, I will right now just link a tutorial in the description that you guys can follow if you want to learn this method. If you want me to do a more in-depth tutorial on my animator, I will set the like goal of 1000 likes. So, as soon as this video reaches that, I will make a more in-depth tutorial. Moving on to backgrounds. Now, Google is going to be your friend on this one as you can search up virtually any image that you want to. However, if you want to screenshot something you've already done in a world or in a server, that is just fine as well. If you want your character to actually be in a map and make it look like shadows are falling on the ground where your character is, you will have to use Minimator. And again, if this video reaches a thousand likes, I will do a much more in-depth tutorial in Minimator on how you can add background scenes and blocks and other maps and stuff like that. For right now, however, I will just use this image that I found on Google. The last step in making a thumbnail is compiling everything together. And by this, I mean adding your background and character and then also adding text all to the same image. Now, to do this, you will need some sort of photo editing software. The software that I like the most is called Paint.net. The reason I like this software is because that it is free and you can also install plugins on it. I will leave a link to paint.net's website in the description so that you can download it. Over the months, I have found quite a few useful plugins that I use in making my thumbnails, and I have put them all together in one folder that I will leave a download link to in the description. Also now, I will show you how to apply these effects or plugins to paint.net once you have them installed. Once you have downloaded my effects pack, you can take it and extract the files to the desktop and then take this folder and open it up and then you see you have all of these .dll files. Ta -da. What you can do is go to the bottom and then drag up and select all of them and hit 
control copy or control C and then go back into your file explorer and navigate to your local disk and then go into your program files and then you will see a folder labeled paint.net and from here you can double click on it and then there is a folder called effects right here and then when you double click on it and open it and then you will control V or paste all of them in here and I already have all of these effects so I don't need to repaste them. Once you have the image that you want for your background you can open it in paint.net by right clicking on it and hitting open with and then paint.net right here. Just a quick note, the thumbnail size on YouTube is 1280 by 720 resolution. So if your image is not that size, all you have to do is go up to here and go image and resize and type in 1280 by 720 and hit OK. And now this is the size of a YouTube thumbnail. Now you may be wondering what these plugins or effects are that you've just downloaded and I will show you. You have this tab right here in paint.net labeled effects and when you click on it you get all of these effects in normal paint.net you wouldn't even have half of these and a few things that it can do is add all these different kinds of blurs which are very useful changing the color distorting the image and this is where you can add outlines around your objects which is also very very useful it has loads and loads of more effects that you can do that you have just installed now we can open up our character render and remove the background like this just grab your character and drag it into paint.net and hit open and it will open it in a new tab now from here to remove the background you take the magic wand tool like this and then hold the button shift and click down on the image and it will select all of the background and now to invert the selection to just what we want hit control i and then it will change what is selected and from here you can hit control c or copy and go back to your original image add a layer and hit control v and there you go here is your character render now from here you can resize your character to whatever you want and position them wherever you want so for me I will move my character to right about here. Now from here, I like to add an outline around my character. And you can do this with one of the plugins that you just installed by hitting Effects, Object, and then Drop Shadow. And then you can change the color. I would do white on this one. And how big of a line and how blurry the line is. So I might do a little bit blurry of a line and a little bit bigger like this so our character pops. And now we can add text. So to add text, all you have to do is add a new layer and go to the text tool and select your font. Now speaking of fonts, if you want any different fonts besides the ones that you have on your computer, all you have to do is go to defont.com and search for whatever type of font you want and download it. Once you have the font that you want installed, you will have to restart your program. And then as soon as you do that, you can go up and select the font that you want. And for me, I am going to use the Swing Devil demo because I think it looks very nice. And then you can choose the color of your text and I will do this yellow shade. And then you can change the size in this little drop down menu. And then you can click anywhere on your image and type what you want. And for right now, I will just do PVP. And then you can use these little arrows and move it around and do whatever you want with it. And since there is this big gap here, I'm going to add another layer and add some more text. Like this. And then you can align them however you want. And now... You can condense your layers by hitting the merge layer down and now with your text layer you can add effects to it. Now for adding a outline to your text instead of using the drop shadow effect I like to use the outline object effect and I'll show you why. It does basically the same thing however you can angle it right here 
with this little feature. And I like doing this, and then wherever you move this arrow, it will angle it. So say we wanted black font again, and then you could put out the width, and wherever you move this arrow, it will adjust and put your drop shadow there, like that. And then lastly, you can add effects to your background layer. And I like to add some blurs to maybe focus it on the main character. So we'll use another one of the effects called radial blur. And you can click on this and then adjust how blurry you want it right here with the angle. So I like the angle too. And then you can move the little crosshair to wherever you want on your image to center it around what you want blurred. So I'm going to center it right around my character like this. In a thumbnail, it is also nice to have some special effects going on in the background, like some clouds with lightning coming from them or anything else like that that you want to add. This can kind of take a while, so I'm just going to speed it up and show you what I would do, but it's completely up to you on what you want to add. One little thing I forgot to mention is that you can rotate your text, which can make it look better and in more in line with the thumbnail. And how you do this is you select the layer of your text and go up to Layers and hit Rotate and Zoom, and then you can move these little sliders around to angle your text however you want. So I'm going to angle the text a little bit out to give a little bit more depth and then you can also mess around with a little bit of the zoom and position of where your text is like this one more little thing you can do to your thumbnail is add an outline and how you do this is you have to condense all of the layers that you have already onto a singular layer and then you add a layer and drag it to below your image and then you have to give this a solid fill of whatever color you want your border to be. So for me, I'm going to do black and then I'll just click since I'm on this layer and now you can see that it is completely black. Now I will go back to my top layer and then how you do this is you fade the edge by going to effects, photo, fade edge. And then you can make it however thick you want and to what power you want, like how clear it is like this. So for me, I would like a pretty high power and then a little bit less width like this, just to kind of wrap everything up and make it look more like a picture. And then from here, you're pretty much done. All you have to do is condense your layers together and then save it however you want. And that's your thumbnail.